Good morning. Makes me a little nervous when you're this quiet at 1030. Normally I have to interrupt, so I'm not sure what was going on today. I need to get your energy levels up a little bit. Okay, I, uh, I have a bunch of announcements for you today, so just sit tight. First of all, Tuesday's meal is pork chop, and just want to say how much we appreciate the guys doing this. I know you've, you've, we've talked about it many a time, but you know, just that connection during the week makes so much of a difference, both for those guys as they connect with each other, but for the rest of us who uh, get to partake of that meal or maybe pick one up and take it to somebody, it's an important way that our church connects with people, and I thank you guys for that. Uh, this afternoon, 2 o'clock, party here for the Swope, Swope family. Uh, we're celebrating, is it, did I hear right, you're 95? Ninety-five years old, and are are we celebrating how old he is, or how long he's put up with you guys? Which is it? Yeah, mine's a little old. I was kind of thinking. Okay, so if you could come, it starts at two o'clock. Celebration does here at church today, if you can. Another celebration this week, Saturday, McCutcheonville Fire Department from ten to two is having their open house. Pastor, did you ever find somebody who knows anything about cotton candy? No. We are in serious trouble. Somebody is hiding their skills. And you need to uncover those skills today because we need help figuring out the cotton candy machine. All right? Uh, maybe there's physics to it. Some of you physics majors would know. I don't know how to do it. So we could use the help. This is also a week that we, that we re-engage with our committees. So listen carefully. I'm going to tell you who's meeting when. And they're meeting in two different groups, okay? On Tuesday at 630, if you most recently have served on the worship prayer and worship committee, or hospitality or missions and outreach, anything related to that area, Tuesday at 6 Thursday. Then Thursday at 6 o'clock is trustees, at 6 30 is ad council. So Tuesday, big group meeting together. Thursday, just trustees at 6 and ad council at 6 30. Now, I'm sure I've missed an announcement, so what did I miss? Right here. Oh, the board is up for sign ups. That's exactly right. For, to, to serve, appreciate that. I saw some people looking at it today, so that's a good thing. Other announcements? Anybody? All right, how about if we sing a little bit? Anel?
you've got. Let me hear you. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. Take just a minute to make somebody near you feel welcome, would you please? For those of you who are watching at home, this is a special time when we visit one another, when we get to just, you know, break that, that loneliness we've had all week long, when people, you haven't seen anybody and you just want to get out and, and reach out to your family. Church is a family, right? Our church family. So this is an important time. And those of you at home, we want you to know we're thinking of you as well. And so just know that when you're watching this, that today at church, we celebrated you being a part of our family. Now. Today's service is all about trust, and so we're going to sing a couple of songs that deal with trust, we're going to read scripture that deals with trust, and we're going to think about trusting God, but God wants us to have examples, right? It's easier to see something if, if it's happening in your eyes, you can understand what God's talking about, that's what a parable was, showing us examples, right? So everyone, I want you today to create your own parable. I want you to think of your own person in your life that you know you can trust. Think about who that person is, why you know you can trust them, maybe examples of when you had to trust them and how you were able to depend on them. Now that's obviously going to be magnified by 10,000 times in your relationship to God, but it helps us to have a, vi a view of one. And my wife has told me that I'm never allowed to embarrass her in church, right? So I can't tell stories on her, so I'm going to do the next best thing. There's somebody here today that I know I can trust. Why do I know I can trust this person? Because this person entered my family when he didn't have to. He chose to. He took on two of my grandchildren, not because he had to, but because he wanted to. He works the same place I work. 
He cares about the same things I care about. If I need something, all I have to do is call him, and it's taken care of. Perfect example this week, there was a soccer game that my daughter and my granddaughter and my wife were going to right in the middle of supper time. He said, no problem, I'll have supper waiting for you when you get home at 8 o'clock. So, Jaron, I've never done this before, but I want to thank you for being somebody I can trust. And all of us need an example in our lives of someone we can trust. So whoever your person is, would you think about them this morning as we sing and as we prepare for the sermon? Because we need to be able to trust God. And sometimes the best way we do that is by seeing godly people who are trustworthy. Let's sing Trust and Obey. do a children's sermon today, but I'm going to do a children's sermon not just to the kids, because once in a while I get a really good children's sermon idea, and as I do it, I think, well, you know what, I bet there's a lot of adults that need this children's sermon too, so I'm not just going to talk to the kids, but I'm going to talk to the big kids also. There's a scripture in the Bible that comes from Ecclesiastes, and Ecclesiastes, to paraphrase it, tells us that a cord put together in three is much stronger than an individual cord by itself, that it will break under stress. And I wonder what that means to, to each of us. What that means is when this cord is all pulled together, when it is united, which is the base of unity, it works a lot better. When it's separated, it gets frayed, it gets weak, and it breaks. What does that mean for us? Well, that means that we need to help each other out. We need to become bonded together. We need to lift each other up. And I, I thought about this, and I wondered if, if you had a really big, heavy box. And little kids, we don't lift much. Little kids don't, and old people don't either. But we can't lift much. But if we get somebody to help us, and somebody to help us carry it, then it's easier and it makes the job much better. And I think Jesus said something about take on my yoke because it makes it lighter. My yoke is lighter. So what we need to think is what does somebody need help with? And is if you're a real little kid or if you're a big kid, do you need to know somebody needs help in working together? Do we do that in schools? Schools, I think they have teams and they have a baseball team. And if all of the baseball teams running around doing their own thing, it doesn't work. But when the team all pulls together and uses the word team, it works so much better. 
That's the same way with a school. That's the same way with a church. That's the same way with a country. And so as little kids and as big kids, we need to know that we need to be together, not all separated out doing our own thing. But when we all go together, it makes us much stronger. This isn't my words. This isn't some word of a person that just made it up last week. This is the word of God. It's in the Bible. Would you pray with me? Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we ask you to be with our kids. Lord, we ask you to be with our big kids and let them know that God wants us united. He wants us to work together. To work together in schools, to work together in churches, to work together in our neighborhood to make people believe and know that Jesus Christ, because when we work together, Lord, we can share the love of Jesus all around us. We pray these in Jesus' name. Amen. Our joys and our concerns this morning. What joys do we have this morning? What joys do we have? Anybody have any joys? Anybody have any joys out there? Yes. Good to be back where I belong. Good to be back where you belong. Yes. Nice to have you back with us. I'm sure you had a great trip. Anybody else? Any other? Yes. Everett, hi. You could be back from North Carolina, yeah. <laughs> I think you had a good time. Yes. Oh my god. Okay. We'll keep all of them in prayer. All of them in prayer. Yes. Nice to have Sue back with us and keep Sue in your prayers, absolutely. Yeah, nice to have Sue with us today. Yes? I have a joy and concern also. We had a safe trip out to Colorado and back. Road trip, so we drove that got in last night. And uh, this is our son and daughter-in-law. And then on the way back, we got word that Ron's sister's in the hospital and they think maybe she's in her last stages of life. Oh, well, that's so sad. I'm sorry. Her name's Helen. He Ellen? Uh, Helen. Helen. Help, close to yours, Helen, <laughs> Marla, I'm sorry, Helen, sure, anybody else? It's nice to see a couple people back that have been gone on vacation, uh, nice to welcome you back, uh, if you've been gone for a couple days, or it's nice to have everybody back. Anybody else, any joys, any concerns? Well, uh, keep everybody, everybody, you need to keep everybody down in line with this big, this big uh, cars have been had, they had a tree down there. <laughs> don't don't forget the fire. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you, Gary. Yeah. Thank you. You know, it's kind of nice nice to get up here and I kind of look around and see who all's here and all your smiling faces. It's nice to see you all this morning. Nothing else. Would you go to the Lord in prayer with me? Most gracious and loving God. Lord, this morning as we come in prime of prayer, it is a time that we come and we worship God in the most special way that we can. We talk to God. We communicate. Through Jesus Christ, we have that accessibility. We have that place that we can just come and be right here with you. We can tell you our deepest concerns, we can tell you our joys. We lift up all of those in our congregation this morning as unspoken requests. We lift up concerns they have. And Lord, we thank you for all of our many blessings. Be with us as we go through our service today. Forgive us for places that we have messed up in our life. And uh, Lord, we ask as we do in the Lord's Prayer that we will forgive others as they forgive us. Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for your blessings. Thank you for each person that is here this morning. We ask that the Holy Spirit will fall upon us this morning and we will have the blessings to go out the rest of the week. In Jesus' name we pray.
Amen. same way, okay? Uh, we want to mix it up a little bit. Today, we're going to take the offering, and then when we finish, we're going to leave the offering in place at the back. And that's as a reminder to you that if you didn't have a chance to write the check, that's fine. You can do it later in the service. Not always preaching, of course. But you can do that later in the service to be, still feel included. Some Sundays, we'll bring it forward. Some Sundays, we'll see the doxology as we bring it forward. Today, we're just going to let you quietly listen as Anel plays and as the ushers take the offering. So the ushers, could you come, please? Isn't it nice to have a preacher who's so anxious to preach that he won't even let me sing my third song? Man, let's sing another one.
About seven months ago and leading up to that for the last few years, we've had some issues. What we decided to trust him where God was taking us. And by doing that, we have joined a new denomination. And the new deformed denomination is the Global Methodist Church. If you don't know, we are in what is called the Great Lakes Conference, which is about four states around us. It is still a provincial conference until we meet. But this morning, I would like to um, welcome all of us into being Global Methodists. So this morning, in the faithfulness of early Christian practice and in a Wesleyan tradition, let us remember our baptism of the water and the spirit, renewing our commitment to resist evil and renounce evils of the word, world, to repent of our sins and to turn to Jesus Christ, acknowledging him of our Lord and Savior, being obedient and following God's holy will and commandments, walking with them in all of the days of our life by the grace and power of God, but in also nurturing each other in Christ's holy love. And by his teaching and by his example, we use them to be guided, to the ex accept God's grace for themselves, professing openly and leading a Christian life. As we walk in faith the last few years, we followed a new direction. Today, in affirming our membership in the Global Methodist Church, we affirm our belief that Jesus Christ is our Savior and our Lord, that God is the Father, and the Holy Spirit lives in us today. All of these together make the Trinity, the Holy Trinity that we follow. We confirm our baptism as an outward sign accepting of Jesus Christ and a new life, but yet we were still all working toward perfection of our salvation. As Global Methodists, we want to welcome all of our neighbors and to love them, professing them as we love ourselves and encouraging us to love as a Christian heart. In the Global Methodist Church, as followers of Jesus Christ, we want to make it our mission to share the love of Jesus, to make disciples who worship passionately, who love extravagantly and witness boldly. <clears throat> we want to remember this is our mission of being Christ church. In making a new covenant with God and with each other as a global Methodist congregation, I ask you, do you accept the responsibility of baptism to undertake the opportunities to serve as Christians nurturing each other and fellowship, will you uphold the vows by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, and your love? If you do, would you please read this with me? With God's help, we will order our lives after the example of Jesus Christ. By his steadfast love, may we fought in faith and be strengthened in a way that leads to life eternal. Would you pray with me? Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we open up our arms and we welcome each person here that are members of the Global Methodist Church. We ask that we will follow our mission to love our neighbors as ourselves, to worship together and to share Christ with the world. Lord, we are to make disciples of the world around us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
Would you please stand this morning as we have the reading of God's Word? I'd like to read to you this morning from the book of Psalms, the 37th chapter and the first through the fifth verse. Do not fret because of those who are evil or be envious of those who do wrong for they are like grass they will soon wither like green plants they will soon die away trust in the Lord and do good dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture take delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart commit your way to the Lord trust in him and he will do this. This is a word of God for the people of God. You may be seated. A swimming instructor had been teaching children on the how to float. He gave them very simple instructions. Put your ears in the water Put your belly button out. Then you will feel my hands underneath you. And I'm going to count to three. And as I count to three, you'll see that you can float because you will no longer feel my hands underneath you. But most of the children that he was teaching, as soon as he would not get to three, but get to two, he would get this knee-jerk reaction that their knees would hit their chin and their arms would go flailing about. Not because of the uncertainty of the instructor or lack of trust of him, but the lack of trust in themselves. The lack of trust that they could actually float. But they, we should know that floating is a posture of relaxing. That you won't sink if you lay on your back and just relax and float. Faith is the same thing. It is a posture of relaxing. But many of us are terrified. We always think that we need to be in charge. We need to have that support. We need to support in our lives and we want to control everything that goes with us. The control and the support of a steady job, the control and the support of a steady relationship, and we need backup plans for everything that we do. Our retirement has to be in place. You see, God knows how we're made. And so that God will know that we can trust Him in our faith. He takes us all out for swimming lessons. He takes us out and tells us that we need to put our ears in the water and just relax. Because he's teaching us daily to rely on him. But yet we still have this knee-jerk reaction. We still have this fear of do we have enough faith or is my faith warranted? A testimony to this I just heard in the last week of a lady that her family, their husband, had lost his job. I can bet you can about imagine that family, family was having that knee-jerk reaction. What are we going to do? Because the big number one thing that I laid out, our support system was destroyed. But they found out that God had bigger and better plans as they trusted him. Within a week, the lady told me this is the answer they got. He received a new job. But not just a new job, because if he had stayed with the one, he would have been right there where he was. But he got a new job. Better pay, better benefits, And it helped with the hours of the family that he was able to be more present as a father. 
You see, God takes us out for swimming lessons every day. And so when we rely on him and put our faith in him, we see that we have a support system that is not of our doing, but is of God's. Now we know that living as a Christian is not an easy life. And I would imagine every one of you inside your head right now saying amen. And you're allowed to say amen out loud if you want to. But God is calling us as Christians to live for a pursuit of holiness. But this is not for somebody that is weak. This is where God's, only by God's grace, we are able to fight daily sin in our lives, trusting God. And as you think about all of this in your life, I want you to open up Psalms 37. Because Psalms 37 invites us in to a conversation. The same conversation that David had when he wrote this. Because David was writing to God the same things that we do all the time. And the writer is inviting us in and counsels us as listeners. As we read this, we see that God is talking to each one of us through David's writings. And as you let this come on in into you, this, there's five folds in the beginning of this psalms. And this is a lengthy psalm, but you can read a lot of it. But you just read the first five verses. And there's five folds in there of what God is telling David as David is talking. But the very first word that David uses, or one of the first words in the first phrase David uses, is the word fret. And to let you know how important this is, this is used three times in the psalms, that we are not... To fret. But the word mirrors again in fret of being envious in Psalms 73. As Ashes is bothered by a temporary prosperity of the wicked. And so fret is used here. But fret is not something that we really talk about today. We say, well, you're worried about something, or I can see that you're bothered about something, but very, very seldom do you go up and say, what's fretting you today? So if I would use cinnamons, what I, what I would think of fret is, I would use words like worry or anxious or bothered. But as I dug into this a little bit more, I see that by the word of the Greek word, it is shahara or hara. And it goes deeper than just being bothered. You see, it says that you are blazed with anger when you fret. You are incensed. And then I looked a little bit deeper and I found something that just really caught my attention. It says fret causes corrosion. So let's use that in a sentence of where we understand that something corrodes. Something corrodes is sits out in the weather. It's a type of metal. And over time of oxidation, it gets rust on it. And if you go back in a little while, that metal is no longer there. It's gone. It's been corroded. It's been ate up. So what we're talking about here, if we fret... We're letting our inner soul be ate up, be corroded, be taken away from us. So the psalm is telling us, do not fret. Do not fret because you're going to let your inner soul, you're going to let your soul rust away. So David is saying, do not let yourself get super upset. Yeah, we're supposed to worry a little bit about things, but do not get yourself super upset. And don't worry about the people on the other side of the fence. The Psalms calls them evildoers. People that uh, are not living just like you are. 
Now, he's not talking about people that are murderers, thieves. But he's talking about people that maybe are not living like you are. And you're saying, but I'm trying to live this good Christian life. I go to church on Sunday morning. I read the Bible, I pray, but I still have problems. And I look over the fence and my neighbor over there, he never goes to church. And he's got a perfect life. I saw him drive in last week with a new car. He's got a wonderful marriage. His kids are perfect. This is what David's talking about. Not the major sins in our life that we're worried about, the evildoers, but we're worried about why somebody else is doing better than I am. What F.B. Myers says is in his commentary, he puts it this way. David is grappling with a problem of inequality of human life and the apparent failures that God is not always there to reward his servants and publishes and punish his enemies. See, that's what we want. That's our human nature. We want God to punish others and reward us for being good. It goes down to the very core of our nature. And it leads to anxiety. It leads to comparison of others. It leads to envy. And that is the ultimate key to our unhappiness. So Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 tell us this. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not rely on your own insight. I'd rather rely on my own insight. I'm in control of everything. But that's not what the scriptures tell us. So Psalm 37, this is the answer Psalms 37 gives us. Trust in the Lord and do good. It's a very Wesley thing. It's a very Methodist thing to do good, to do no harm, to stay in love with God. It goes back to the very roots of who we are as Methodists. But it also goes back to the very root of who we are in our Christian life. So as we trust in the Lord and do good, it is not as much as a command, but it is as, as an exercise. It is how we go out and live our daily life. We trust in God. We go and do good for others. It becomes more of an action of a body that comes through faith. So we can do that. So we are told to trust. We're also told, and trust what it does. It builds faith, faith of an action. It challenges us to have a balance between who we are and to become easier in trusting God. And when we truly trust God, we listen to what God's will is. And when we do that, it says that our paths will be made straight. I want you to listen then to the second half of just a verse 3. The second half of this is dwell in the land of his faithfulness. The idea of abiding with God and living with him. To go and grow in a closer relationship with God, with Jesus Christ. And Jesus told us this on the last days as he talked about a vine. He said that you need to be part of a vine, to grow in this to connection. Dwelling in the land, be part of it. And then your soul will grow great fruit. Last week we heard about a, we talked about a tree that wasn't producing fruit. And it said that it needed to be cultivated. It needed to be fertilized. This is in your faith. You cultivate your faith. You fertilize it. 
And then in this world, you're not just taking up soil, but you're producing fruit. The third fold in the first of this psalm, it says that we are to take delight in the Lord. Again, a word that you don't use much anymore. So what is taking delight? It is finding a joy. Finding a joy, not a happiness, but a joy that is so down deep inside of you that it changes how you go out and feel and work every day. It gives us our heart's desires. And I think you know that when God's talking about in the Bible that he's going to give you your heart's desires. He's not talking about the new golf clubs you've been looking at. He's talking about something that's going to give you peace down deep inside your soul. The last one is to commit to the Lord. You know, it takes a lot I think Corey touched on that. It takes a lot of trust to commit. You've got to know that person is going to be there. You've got to know that somebody is going to be there to you to place your complete trust in him. And so as we put our complete trust in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ because we have read what he has done in the Bible and because we know what he did then, we know in our minds and our hearts what he has done to us and for us now. And so we know in the future, because we know the end of the book, that God is going to do it again. Because of all of this, we can rest patiently and wait on him. I want to make it very clear what they're talking about here. We just don't rest and wait for God to do something. God is a God of action. We don't sit upon our hands and do nothing. God is one that expects our faith to be both faith and action. Romans 15, 13 tells us that God gives us hope and brings peace and rest, relying on God for everything. So I want to go back to the swimming coach, the great instructor, to trust the instructor. As you put your ears in the water and when you put your belly button up, and instead of splashing about, and fretting for and everything. You relax. The Wesleyan Bible tells us that trusting in God every day is an opportunity to trust in God in a new way. In the midst of our daily life, you can put trust in God, hopefully, faithfully, Knowing that life is enfolded in God's love. I wake up again and the Lord sustains me, says in Psalms 3, 5. To be sure, trusting God is the only way to avoid a precautious life. In faith, we know the Lord sustains us in our lives and he watches over us every moment. Trusting God is believing that your life is under God's loving and protective care. Stop and let all that soak in a minute. Let all of what has been told you soak in a minute. Let this sink into your soul. Meditate on the thoughts of all of this. See what David is saying. I'm fretting on all of my life, not to the point of, of worrying about it, not to the point of being bothered about it, but I'm letting it get me so stirred up 
that I'm forgetting who God is, and so my soul is being corroded away. So David is reminding us to trust in our Heavenly Father, to trust in our Lord, to come in and to dwell in His house. Whenever we do that, we will find such delight in all of the goodness around us. And as I trust in God and I see where He is taking me, I will commit. And He will bring it to pass. And I will rest upon the Lord and wait upon Him patiently. Go to the very end of Psalms. It tells you this. The Lord helps them. He rescues them. And he rescues them from the wicked and saves them because they take refuge in him. I want you to take your bulletins home today because in the list of scriptures, the very last one is 1 Peter 5, 6, and 7. I want you to take that home and look it up in your Bible. Maybe mark it. Mark it and take it out and look at it. It says, humble yourself under God's mighty hand so that he may lift you up in due time. So otherwise you're going to have swimming lessons in the world. You're going to have times when you are having problems and struggles and times that you're going through that you don't know where God is, but he is there. You may not feel his hands underneath you, but he is there. And he will lift you up. So cast all of your anxiety on him. And then underline these last few words. Because he cares for you. The challenge is not to focus on our others. The challenge is not to focus on your own problems. The challenge is not to focus on what your neighbor is doing and what other people is doing. The challenge is to walk in the love of Jesus Christ every day in your life. Would you pray with me? Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we ask that you go with us. Lord, be with us. Let us take these words into our hearts and into our minds. Let us take these home with us. And to learn to trust. Trust in the love of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.